are excellent minds. And when you have a collision of orbitals between colleagues and the discovery of a joint problem that can really be pushed forward, wonderful things can happen. We're not looking for, can we provide a patient with a couple of extra months or even a couple of extra years? We're looking for a curative response in these patients, and that's really exciting. I found out in 2017, did an MRI with contrast, which lit up my brain and my spine, and found out what's been bugging me forever has been MS, so it's a full-time job, you know, when your body's not connected right. And you keep thinking, well, this is gonna go away, and then after a while, you really realize it's not going away. Having osteoarthritis um, causes you to just stop doing a lot of the things that you love. I think it's tremendously important to keep doing research on this because once I was introduced into that world, I realized, wow, there's so many people who suffer from this in, in one way or in another. I have a huge, profound respect for everybody that does research, the scientists. I guess I always knew I was gonna be a scientist. All through middle school, um, until my mom got breast cancer, and then at that point, my motivation was, okay, I want to help people detect it early because that's how it was for my mom and she ended up with a really good outcome. When I grew up, I worked with my father who was a contractor, so we were always building things with our hands. And chemistry really gives you that feel. It gives you the ability that you're building a molecule with your own hands. When I was in high school, a family friend was diagnosed with rapid progressive multiple sclerosis. It was an emotional fact that I filed away. Later, having trained in medicine, I began to realize that intelligent intervention in multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune diseases could happen if we understood them better. And that began about a 25-year odyssey. Our day-to-day -day job is really to take a disease, and unpack it and really move into the mechanisms of how it's working so that we can explore new, uh, new opportunities for these patients. There's lots of moments of embarrassment when you have osteoarthritis. So it's, uh, it's nice to look into the future and feel like I'm not gonna have to worry about any of those things anymore. And you know, the potential of living a long life is not nearly as exciting as living a long life and feeling well. Sometimes it's really hard to take a molecule that you develop in the lab to all the way to the clinic. It's really, really hard. And it takes uh, work from a lot of people and money from a lot of <laughs> people. And it's really, you know, it really uplifts you. Say, this is possible. This can be done. And Scripps is one of those places where this can be done. What keeps me up at night is how these therapies are going to affect a patient. Are they going to work? Uh, are they going to provide the responses that we think? It's the intersection between the science and the hypothesis that we have and actually impacting someone's life. We are working on these cancer therapies and it all changes how we can treat patients in the future and help people in general. So science is changing everything all the time. <laughs> Science allows a lot of great changes and great possibilities. It allows people that often are debilitated and, and, and not functional to become functional citizens once again. And so it's very rewarding to see that you can have that impact. Even though it may be a small contributor, we work together, we, we can make a difference. Don't stop. There's guys like me that really look forward to the future with technology, uh, the science of it, the recovery of it. I've become obsessed with, with what I have and the sense of kicking its butt. And I know a lot of good people out there like doctors and scientists want to do the same thing for good people. We're all trying to build this wonderful structure. It's like building a Gothic cathedral. And we all have to bring 
the individual bricks and the individual stones, and very occasionally the keystone of an arch. And it's the great privilege of the scientist and of the philanthropist to bring those building blocks for these wonderful therapeutic structures. We don't know exactly which brick will turn out to be crucial. We don't know which stone will turn out to be the keystone of an arch. But if we don't build together, we will never make anything at all.